Hey everyone, it is Eric here with Weather for Weather Geeks as we head into the weekend. Today was one of those days where the atmosphere won a battle. Last evening I talked about how I didn't believe what some of the modeling was showing today with spotty showers making their way into eastern Ohio. I told you we had a dry forecast. And then, yeah, it rained in a lot of the area late this afternoon as showers survived the trip across western PA and pushed into eastern Ohio. So a bit of a forecast bust late today. Uh, if you've been following me uh, for a while, watching me on TV, following me on these videos on social media, you know I don't shy away from uh, busted forecasts. When something goes wrong, I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, transparency is very important to me. And yeah, forecast today uh, for a couple of hours uh, did not go uh, according to plan. Uh, and my apologies if your outdoor plans were hampered as a result. Different day overall today, and we talked about this some over the last couple of days, that today would look a little different with a few more clouds. And one thing we didn't talk about much, but it was certainly uh, in the cards, was a, 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 an increase in moisture in the atmosphere today. Now, if it were July, we'd be talking about, hey, today felt pretty nice. Dew points were mostly in the 50s. But it's not July. It's still May, and the air this week has been very dry. And so today was a pretty big change. Last evening, we had dew points down in the 40s. They dropped into the 30s for a while overnight. But then dew points leveled off in the upper 50s, even lower 60s uh, during the afternoon and early evening today. So a little bit of humidity to talk about today. We haven't had to talk about dew points just yet this spring until today. All right, rain gauges from today. A few impressive amounts here. There's a gauge over towards Elwood City that registered 0 0.41, 0 0.26, closer to East Liverpool, southeastern Columbiana. Amounts a little more modest in a lot of Mahoning County, but a few streaks here, especially in Lawrence County, where at least a quarter of an inch of rain was pretty common. We had some thunder and lightning in some spots earlier on. I'm going to stop the radar loop and show you what uh, was happening as of this recording. It uh, is 7:12 as of this recording, and these showers will uh, fade away fairly quickly this evening. Not much lightning and thunder is left with this. I can't rule out a clap of thunder, but very, very isolated early this evening. Uh, you may have noticed, and I mentioned uh, some on social media today, that these were coming in from east to west today. Kind of an unusual direction for showers to push into our area. It happens, but it's not as common, of course, as things approaching from the west and moving to the east. Well, all week long, we've had kind of an easterly flow across the area. And if I zoom out here, and these are what we call streamlines, basically uh, showing what direction the wind is coming from. And high pressure is anchored out over the Atlantic this evening. Of course, here in the northern hemisphere, the flow around high pressure is clockwise. And so the flow looks like this. And that brings in the wind in a southeasterly direction up the eastern seaboard. And... Uh, all the way through the mid-Atlantic states, and so we've had kind of an easterly flow again today, and that's why things kind of moved in that direction today, kind of from east to west. Also going on in the atmosphere, uh, finally this upper low that was situated off the coast for a lot of the week, uh, that's that kind of circular area down towards the Carolinas and Atlanta. It's finally come ashore and is going to kind of lift north and kind of get absorbed in the flow over the next couple of days. Basically, this will impact our weather some over the weekend in that the atmosphere will be more prone to seeing showers popping up here and there because our ridge that we had for most of the week has broken down and what's left of this trough means a more unstable atmosphere and the possibility of some spotty showers and storms. But the weekend looks even drier today than it has over the last couple of days. So I continue to encourage everyone, if you have outdoor plans this weekend, and you know, in the middle of May, a lot of us do, birthday parties, graduation parties, and everything else under the sun, uh, I would keep the plans, just have a backup just in case you have to, kind of like today, duck inside for a little while with a passing shower or a storm. But a lot of Saturday will be dry. If you're going to get wet Saturday, it's going to be in the afternoon, it looks like, and not all of us will. In fact, a lot of us won't. Maybe a couple of showers then late in the evening after sunset, so those will fade away overnight. And kind of the same idea Sunday. In fact, we've lowered our rain chances in our Sunday forecast. I think we're dry for most of the morning. Maybe as we get into the early to mid-afternoon, we get grazed by a shower or a storm, but the coverage overall, I would not expect to be all that significant. A lot of us will probably get away with a dry day. And then here comes our cold front with uh, showers becoming a little more likely by late Sunday night into Monday morning. So our weekend forecast is warm both days, rain or not. Uh, just like the last few days, well above average. Average is about 70 at this time of the year, but we'll do about 10 better than that over the weekend. Now, I talked about how it's not going to rain much this weekend, and so it may be a little bit surprising to hear that we're under a slight risk for severe weather on Sunday, as issued by the Storm Prediction Center overnight last night. But I would venture to guess 
when they put out the day two outlook later tonight after midnight for Sunday, we will no longer be under a slight risk. Now, the atmosphere will be somewhat unstable, but the wind energy aloft is not going to be conducive to severe weather. And so I think this is probably just overdone on their part for the day three outlook. I would expect us to probably be in the kind of one on a one to five scale, maybe even not even that during the daylight hours on Sunday. Maybe we even go down to, I don't have a zero officially on the scale, but you get the idea, maybe even below a one. I'm just not impressed with the ingredients for severe weather as far as a widespread thing on Sunday. Now, could any of these random, you know, passing showers or storms get a little rambunctious, but very, very localized? Yes, but emphasis on very localized. Most of us won't have to worry about severe weather during the day Sunday. All right, Eclipse Sunday evening. We've been talking about this all week, bringing you updates on what to expect. And in case you uh, are just now kind of tuning in to what's going to happen here, this is a total lunar eclipse. Unlike a solar eclipse, you can look at this. This is happening at night, of course. This is when the Earth passes between the moon and the sun, and the Earth's shadow uh, impacts how the moon looks and covers the moon, and the moon kind of turns a rust or blood red. Um, the total eclipse visible throughout all of eastern North America, uh, cloud cover permitting. 1129 is when the total eclipse starts. Now, the partial eclipse starts at 1027. That's when parts of the moon start to turn red, but it'll go totally red by about 1129, and the total eclipse lasts almost an hour and a half, uh, ending at about 1253. So I've increased our chances of viewing this to 70%. I don't think it'll be crystal clear in most of the area, but I don't think it'll be dead overcast at least during the first part of this. And maybe getting cloudier by 1.32 in the morning, but during the best part of the show, you know, by 10.30, 11, 11.30, 12, I, I think the sky will be clear enough to at least see some of this. So uh, if you don't mind staying up a little later than maybe you're used to, I think this will be worth probably staying up and trying to check out Sunday night. We'll have more updates on that over the weekend, of course. 80 degrees over the weekend, a cool down coming on Monday with a cold front rolling through, and the cool down's modest. I mean, we're talking highs in the mid-60s Tuesday and Wednesday, but then back to the 70s Thursday, and next Friday and next weekend look pretty toasty. I think we'll see a few days with highs in the 80s, and that's reflected on the 8 to 14 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center today covering May 21st to 27th. Pretty good odds of a warmer than average stretch. The very end of May, so around Memorial Day, heading towards the very end of the month, most of our modeling would suggest the warm weather continues. There's a few pieces of information showing a, a bit of a cool down, but I would say the majority of our medium range modeling looks pretty warm compared to the average at the end of May and probably the first few days of June. But we'll dive a little bit more into the very end of May as we go into next week. In the meantime, thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks tonight. I'll see you back here on Monday. Hope you and yours have a great weekend.